Hi, I'm Justin, and I'll be presenting our paper, Inferring and Executing Programs for Visual Reasoning. This was a collaboration between Stanford University and Facebook AI Research. I'd like all of you to take a, take a look at this, uh, these adorable kittens here. And I don't think anyone in the audience has trouble answering the question, what color is the kitten left of the green kitten? You can easily say something like purple or magenta with no trouble whatsoever. You can do this despite never having seen this exact question or image before. And moreover, you can do this probably despite never having seen rainbow kittens before in your life. The reason you can do this is because humans have this amazing ability to perform compositional visual reasoning. What I mean by that is that people can have these basic visual reasoning skills, like identifying objects, identifying colors and spatial relationships. And you can easily compose these basic skills to solve novel, to solve novel, to solve novel tasks. This, this, uh, this idea of compositional visual reasoning is something very powerful that humans can do. And we might hope to build computer vision systems one day that can do this as well. To this end, at CVPR this year, we introduced the Clever dataset to study, to study compositional visual reasoning in computer vision systems. The Clever dataset consists of artificially rendered images, as you can see here, together with synthetic templated questions like the one you see here. These questions can be pretty complex. This one is, how many spheres are left of the big sphere and the same color as the small rubber cylinder? Um, I don't expect you to answer this right away, so let's step through the solution to this question together. To answer this question, we first need to identify the big sphere. Having done that, we need to find spheres left of the big sphere, which are over here. Now we need to set these two spheres aside in our memory and try to find the small rubber cylinder, which is here. After we find the small rubber cylinder, we need to find the spheres the same color of it as it, which are over here. Now finally, we need to combine these two sets of objects and arrive at our final answer of one. So you can see that this task was pretty complex involving many different subtasks. And in particular, the types of basic visual reasoning skills tested by this question include um, attribute identification, counting, comparison, spatial relationships, and logical operations. We've already seen that the Clever dataset contains both images and questions, but we also provide structured representations of the data on both sides of this equation. On the image side, we provide a scene graph representation, which gives us the ground truth attributes and spatial relationships for all objects in the scene. On the question side, we also provide a functional program, which is a structured representation that breaks down the compositional skills we need to use in order to answer the question. Now, due to, the, due, due to the compositional and complex nature of the questions in the Clever dataset, traditional static deep learning architectures don't perform very well. So we tested some baseline models, including an LSTM, a CNN, a CNN plus LSTM, and another model that includes multiple rounds of stack spatial attention. When we evaluate these methods on the Clever dataset, we see a pretty huge gap between the model performance and the performance of humans on Mechanical Turk. So we probably are doing something wrong in these models. We might need to do something differently in order to attack these complex compositional questions. To this end, in this paper, we propose a, co a compositional model for, for visual reasoning, which bakes the idea of compositionality and basic skills directly into the heart of the model. Concretely, our model consists of two components. The first is a program generator, which reads the text of the question and, and produces a program that will be used to answer the question. The second half is an execution engine, which inputs the program and the image and executes the program on the image in order to arrive at the answer. More concretely, the program generator is implemented as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence LSTM model, where one LSTM reads the text of the question one word at a time and produces the program one basic functional unit at a time. One interesting point here is that our programs in general might be tree-structured. So to get around this, we have our program generator produce a prefix traversal of the tree. The execution engine, on the other hand, is a module network, which is a really cool framework proposed by Andreas et al. at CVPR 16. In the module network formulation, the execution engine contains a module inventory, where for each function in the functional pro programming language of the clever world, we have one little module. Each of these modules is itself a tiny neural network chunk. Um, in our implementation, all of our modules are a single residual block with two convolutional layers. One thing to point out is that all of these modules share the same architecture, they only vary in their parameters, and through the training process, these parameters are specialized to the task that these, mo that these modules should perform. Now, that we ha now once we have uh, our modules and our program, we use our modules to assemble a, custom neural or a dynamic neural network architecture that mirrors the structure of the predicted program. 
In this way, for every program that we predict, we end up with a separate new custom architecture for answering that question. This, this architecture then forms a single feed-forward network that we can pass our image through and eventually get the answer to the question. Now, we train this model in three steps. In the first stage, we train the program generator. This is a, this is a supervised sequence-to-sequence -sequence training stage where we input the, the question from the Clever data set and try to predict the ground truth program. In the second stage, we freeze the program generator and train the execution engine using predicted rather than ground truth programs. This means that at the second stage, the only supervision we use is a question, an image, and an answer, and we do not require ground truth programs at this stage. Finally, in the third stage, we jointly fine tune both components of the model. However, there's a slight technical challenge here. Because the program was produced via sampling inside the, inside the program generator, we cannot directly back propagate through this discrete structure. To get around this, we use the reinforce algorithm to compute a policy gradient, which allows us to back propagate through the, uh, into the program generator and train the entire model jointly, even when we don't observe any programs. So now, when we test this model on the Clever data set, we achieve a 97% accuracy overall, which significantly outperforms all other models and also outperforms human workers on Mechanical Turk. However, this comparison is a little bit unfair because our model was trained with a ground truth program for each of the, for each of the questions in the Clever data set. We can slightly relax this constraint by training with fewer program supervisions. In particular, when we train with 18,000 programs from the data set, we still outperform all prior methods and humans. And when we train with just 9,000 programs, we still outperform all of prior work. So getting high performance on the Clever data set is a great first step. But in reality, we really want our model to perform on more complex tasks. But the trick is that on these more complex tasks, we probably won't have access to ground truth programs. Therefore, we need our model to be able to generalize to new data, even when we can't observe any ground truth programs whatsoever. To this end, we collected the new Clever Humans data set, where we asked workers on Mechanical Turk to write natural language questions about images from the Clever data set. These, Im these questions are pretty cool, and they ask about a, a lot of different types of things that never showed up in the Clever training set. For example, on the left, the question asks, asks about shapes reflected in the blue cylinder, and the Clever data set never asked about reflection. When we train different models on the Clever data set and evaluate directly on Clever humans, we see that our model, trained with just 18,000 programs from Clever and no programs from Clever humans, outperforms, the, all, outperforms all models by a slight margin. However, when we fine tune the models on the Clever humans data set, we achieve quite a healthy performance increase over all previous methods. And again, realize that in this joint, finding, in this joint fine tuning process, our model observes no programs on the Clever humans data set. We can gain some additional interpretability into the predictions of our model by examining the types of programs that it synthesizes for questions from Clever Humans. In this example, the question asks, is there a blue box in the items? Now, this question is perfectly expressible using the programming language from Clever, but the words box and items never appeared in the Clever data set. So the model needs to associate the functional primitives with these new words through the joint fine-tuning process. And we see that the, in the predictive program, the model correctly learns to identify the filter shape equals cube function with the word box in the question. For some questions, our model doesn't do so well. For this question, we ask, what shape is farthest right? And the answer is cylinder. Note that this question requir requires absolute spatial reasoning because we need to find the object that's the farthest to the right. And the Clever data set doesn't contain any of these absolute reasoning primitives. It only has primitives about relative reasoning. Therefore, our model predicts a program which cheats a little bit and tries to fake the idea of absolute reasoning by looking to the right of an imaginary object. So in this case, this program was sufficient for, answering, for getting the correct answer, but in general, this type of program will not fail. And it's important to note that the program here was generated without looking at the image. So for other types of images for the exact same question, this program will likely fail. For some, so for some of the more complex questions in the Clever Humans data set, our model doesn't really know what to do at all. Answering this question would likely require new types of functional primitives which were not present in the Clever data set, and our model pretty much doesn't know what to do. If you're interested in this area of visual reasoning, there's a couple other, new, there's a couple other recent works I think you should check out. Um, the work of Who et al. was presented at this conference on Tuesday, and more recently on Archive, there's a couple new papers which have some pretty interesting approaches. So I don't want to give you the impression that visual reasoning is solved. I think this is a new area with a lot of really interesting problems yet to solve. 
One question is, can we try to learn compositional reasoning without any supervision whatsoever? Our model nicely disentangles the, mo uh, nicely disentangles the problem and learns these little modules for reasoning, but we require supervision from the clever data set in order to do it. Another question, can we learn new reasoning skills to augment those learned already? As we saw, the Clever Humans data set likely will, will require learning new basic functional primitives in order to answer, and the best way to do this is an open question. Finally, are there, finally we'd like to generalize to new data and think about real world, real world tasks that require compositional reasoning. So as a final note, our code and data and pre-trained models are all online, so you can check those out. And if you have any other questions, I suggest you stop by our poster number five. Thank you. Any questions? Well, I have a question regarding the possibility, for instance, you mentioned that uh, in some cases your model doesn't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned unsupervised potential future work, unsupervised learning. But is there possibly uh, some approach based on active learning as well in which your model would be able to generate, kind of ask for supervision in certain cases? Yeah, I think active learning is a really interesting framework, but it's, there's a lot of technical challenges involved. But I think it'd be really cool if the model could sort of look at the question and realize that it doesn't know how to answer and maybe ask for help for humans. So I think that's a really good suggestion. And do you have any idea how would you be able to integrate that into your framework? Uh, I haven't really given it much thought, but uh, hmm. yeah, uh, I, I'd have to think about it a little bit more. But you might imagine looking at maybe the, the predicted distributions or the pre predicted answers. Maybe if the model is very uncertain in its either uh, final answer prediction or in its program predictions, that might be a signal that it needs help. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so if you skip the pre-training on uh, supervised information and just go straight to reinforcement learning, mm -hmm. um, how well do you do? Do you like get any performance or does it just totally fail? So in, we, we did very limited exper experiments on this, so I think that my accuracies here are probably not indicative of the, of the final performance if you did it right. So I, did, I was unable to get really good accuracies, but then again, we're also using the, sort of the most simple, most vanilla implementation of a policy gradient method. So we only, uh, my implementation only used a single rollout and only a, sing, uh, a simple scalar baseline. So I think if you used something like uh, additional rollouts and this more explicit policy search and maybe a fancier baseline, I don't really know whether the model would be able to, to work or not. Thank you. 